In the season seven finale, we get into hopper cars. Well, we're going to look at the differences that are just based with visual indicators. We dive into the old maps to learn a little bit more about locations as well as some of the car routing on JMRI. We take a look at a freight rolling with Bob. We also check out what the curmudgeon's gripe of the week is this week. Only in this episode of Soothe the Milwaukee Road. Today we're going to look at a multi-segment feature on hopper cars. We call this Hopper for Dummies. Did you just call us stupid? I think he called you a dummy. Isn't that the same thing? Aren't all hoppers the same? Well, we're going to look at the differences that are just basically visual indicators because sometimes different cars haul different things. This one here we're looking at a PS4000, most notably has the round hatches on top. There are 10 in all, as well as a rib missing here and here. No hatches are found here or here because there's a bulkhead within these cars dividing these particular segments apart. Did they haul different things in each little bay? I don't know. But I am looking at just the overall exterior look of a car and the lack of those ribs that tells me that there's something inside dividing these portions up. As we move on to the 4427, these cars are very similar. A hopper's a hopper's a hopper's a hopper. Only 427 cubic feet bigger than the PS4000. But you're going to also notice that the ribs are lacking here and here. That's a key notable feature along with those elongated overall hatches. Those hatches themselves made it easier for loading some of the commodities like corn, wheat, or oats. Uh, this is also a low hip car. There is a difference between the hip heights and we're going to move on to the cousin of this 4427 which is a 4427 high side. See the low hip and notice the high hip. Obviously it's a notable difference along with the additional rib here and the rib here and the gussets that you'll find underneath here and here. These cars themselves still do have the long hatches on top, four of them individually mounted that can be flipped open and then loaded accordingly. The cars themselves are a little bit different than the car we're going to look at in a moment, but we'll take a look at that in just a bit. With this being season 7 finale, we figured we'd save the best for last when rail fanning with Rabard. We've got ourselves some audio chatter that we listen into while he waits for a train to come up the hill. The first train that we hear is Milwaukee Road 157. It's an eastbound that's going to pull into Humboldt. Let's take a listen. Okay, Milwaukee 157 East outline in to Humboldt Yard there over. After 157 chattered away, we end up listening to another crew that was calling, asking about permission to be able to work their way by the High Line, through the High Line, something about the High Line and the Foley Y. Well, if you don't know where any of those locations are, we've got the High Line located here, and we've got on the west end of the High Line is Hilo Junction. I thought it was Hilo. Nah, that's some place in Hawaii. This is Hilo Junction. It's the High Low Line for the Sioux Line. We've also got that on the east end of the Foley Y. When you hear him referencing the Foley Y, that's where it's located. We've got ourselves also a few streets to be able to reference. On the left-hand side, we've got ourselves Marshall. And then you also note when the guys mention Central. Central is located right here. We'll also hear the crews mentioning occasionally Johnson. Colonel, you better take a look at this radar. What is it, son? I don't know, sir. But it looks like a giant dick. Yeah. Take a look out of starboard. Oh my god, it looks like a huge... Pecker! Oh yeah. Wait, that's not a wood pecker, it looks like someone's... Private! We have reports of an unidentified flying object! It is a long, smooth shaft, complete with two balls! What is that? That looks just like an enormous... Wang! Pay attention. I was distracted by that enormous flying... Willie. Yeah. What's that? Well, it looks like a giant... Johnson. Yes, sir. Get on the horn to British intelligence and let them know about this. Johnson Street is located right here. And then you might ask yourself, well, what trains are we looking at today? Well, we've got a train that's going to be working its way eastward, and that's going to be the train 943. This is the train Sioux 4434. It's going to be working its way east. We'll hear from a westbound, which is Sioux 4440. They're sitting just east of Stinson. While they're sitting up there, that would be referred to as train 940. And you ask yourself, where's Bob? Bob is standing right here. 
Yep, exactly, Bill. That's where Bob's going to be shooting from. He is going to be looking westward, but occasionally he'll swing around and look eastward. But that's where he's at, and let's join him right now. Blue Charm, CTC Dispatcher. Uh, you were walked on there, Kenny. Would you give me that again, please? Over. Okay, thanks, Kenny. Dispatcher. Uh, you're going to come out that East Main, I guess, to the High Line there to Humboldt, huh? Okay, you can, uh, as soon as you get your orders there, you can head that way to Marshall Street on the East Main. Uh, over. Okay, thanks, Kenny. Dispatcher out. Sue Sharm, CTC Dispatcher to 4440 West. Over. Now, what is it, Dale? High line, fully Y, okay. Well, that guy isn't across Central yet, Dale, over. A lot can happen yet. to climb up the hill, you ever ask yourself, what do you do while you wait for the train to pass? I think you play little shoes. Hey, Dad, watch your shins. Oh, those terrible toss. All right, here we go. The key to this is get the arm swing down. You gotta swing your arms, hit them swinging, and then give a good lob. Oh, that one kicked a little bit. I'll lob another. I kicked a little bit, it came all the way up here, Hank. Well, that's it. I give up on this game. I'm gonna go hop the train. We're not sure what White Pants is doing, but, well, he's clearly going rail side. What are you doing, Hank? Looking for your other shoe? Well, the way he tosses, it could be up there. Hopper for dummies. After looking at the pair of 4427s and the PS4000, we're gonna move on to a 4500. This is a different manufacturer known as General American. These cars were made with a multi-rib alignment. We're looking at a five space three space five. That's the biggest notable difference from the side of a car. You'll see a skinny rib on each end and that will tell you that this is the 4500. The roof on top, if you get an opportunity to see one from above, six hatches. The six hatches along with the roof walk that has ribs all the way around on the top here. That's a definitely a different indicator as far as the car itself to be able to identify a 4500. Again, that's a general American car. We're gonna move back to Pullman Standard here in just a moment. This is the most popular car that Pullman Standard had done, and you still see a lot of these rolling around today. These particular cars themselves, cubic capacity is 4,750, or known as a PS 4750. As you look at the overall details, the biggest marker is that these things actually have kind of an arched end. The top of the car is arched and the gap between the top sill and the roof walk is actually fairly substantial. These are a high hip car as well. As you can see through here, it is a four hatch top in the elongated format. So not anything overly different than the rest of the cars. We're gonna take a look at a different 4750 in just a moment. Wrapping up the seventh season of Sue the Milwaukee Road and three seasons of the GN in 1970, we've hit a milestone, 100 episodes. If you've tuned into them all, we thank you and want to say, we're sorry, that time is not refundable. Hopefully you've enjoyed the ride thus far. Do you know how many seconds have ticked by for the two series combined? Is it A, 82,852, B, 71,159, C, 61,480, or D, 12,860? We'll find out later in this episode.
Today we're going to take a moment to look at JMRI. We're going to be very brief because JMRI is not for everybody, but to give those that use it a little better idea how to get cars to move better, we're going to take a look here. To get cars moving better, the first thing I do is look at the cars. Is it the problem with the car or is it the problem with the location? Those are really the two questions that you need to ask yourself. And then I'll show you the area that you go in and make an adjustment to see more movements. As you can see here, fairly well balanced. You're seeing three, four moves per car. You see the zeros up here. That's because these cars are offline. If you see an O, those are offline cars. They're either being repaired or I'm taking them off and just not using them. Now, as we move along here, we look at our locations. This is very important to be able to know just overall glance. I can see overall I've got 2,000 feet. I've got about 1,000 feet used. I'm about 50-50 of capacity. Now on your railroad, you want to see something closer to a 60-40, 60% occupancy, 40% openness, which we're a little bit closer to here in South Town Yard. I'm using the majority of it, but I still have room to move. You want to keep this in mind because the railroad itself needs places to move cars. <laughs> And it can't move if you lock it all up by putting cars in every single spot and filling every single spot in your yard. So to be able to keep those things in mind, to be able to see more freedom, these are the numbers that you want to kind of look at. Now this one train that's located here, this is elevator T, and that's that job that I use that little switcher with. So we're not going to dive into that. We're just going to look at the elevator district in the main locations. And specifically, it's actually under routes. Now the routes themselves, this is what's important and what can give you more movement for your cars. It's located within here and it's located under moves. Now I in total have about 30 moves between elevator T and the Hiawatha. This location here, if I change this, it will increase my operation time. Right now I'm in about an hour and a half. I could increase this probably to 25 or 30 and see myself easily into two hours because it's going to add more cars, it's going to add more moves, and it makes it a little bit more complicated for operators. So if I want to see longer operating sessions, this is where it happens. If I want to see more moves on the railroad, this is actually where it happens as well. So keep those things in mind, balance your trains, balance your routes, and you're going to find good success in the end. Wish you best of luck. DTC dispatcher to the 4434 East, over. Next 4434. Are you making it all right, over? We're barely making it, but I think we can make it. We're over Central. Let that other guy down to number one main then. Blue Shorm CTC dispatcher to the 4440 West, over. 4440. You can come down, dispatcher out. For a CTC dispatcher, would you line us back on two into the yard, please? Uh, so Charm CTC dispatcher, okay. I'll line you into the yard. Dispatcher out. Dispatcher out. m and S number 32 is an SW1200. This particular locomotive will get painted into Sioux line paint not too long after this video is taken. It gets painted up as Sioux 1202 or 1202. 
The second unit that is sitting here is 377. This is actually the first locomotive that I ever had the opportunity to throttle up down at Pig's Eye Yard. The 4440 is going to work its way down the hill. It's going to take the High Line across. It's going to go past Marshall, past Camden, and eventually into Humboldt Yard. Hopper for dummies. After looking at the PS4750, we're going to move on to the Magor 4750. The most notable feature with the Magors is that these cars were aluminum. We don't say aluminum, we say aluminium. Aluminium. The material itself was aluminum. Aluminium. We don't say aluminium, we say aluminium. Aluminium. Yeah. Yeah. Aluminium. Yeah. Aluminium. Aluminium. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Come on. This car is not weathered as well as it should be. The panels themselves got really dark but the ribs and the weld seams on each side stayed fairly light. The roof itself has three different hatches across the top and then a large flat roof walk to be able to get it around on the top of the car. Again, notable difference with the 4750 of the Magor versus the PS was the car material that it was made out of. Aluminium. As we move on to the largest car that we have and the last car that we're gonna look at, it is a PS 4785. These particular cars are unique and different because they don't have a center sill underneath here. If you notice that, there's no sill underneath these cars. They also have ends that have bottoms in them. So both of the end cages have a flat bottom, flat bottom versus an open frame. That's very notable. And then there's a little bulkhead on the very end as well. Those are very key notable features. It just has a four hatch arrangement on top and then a traditional roof walk. Again, capacity-wise, is 4785, and that was helped because they don't have a center sill. That's all for the information on the hopper cars. Hopefully, you're a little less of a dummy and a little bit more of an expert. When you're looking at some of the cars on different railroads, key in on some of those factors because, well, different commodities, different materials, you never know what a car is hauling. Yeah, this is William to the Sioux Shoreham CTC Dispatcher, over. Sioux Shoreham CTC Dispatcher, over. It's good that Bob captured all this, right? That's right. Did you get your guesstimation estimation on and guess A, 82,852, an equivalent of 23 hours. That's viewing time. 23 viewable hours translates to 1,380 hours to create which would equate to 57 and a half days of non-stop editing to create the 100 episodes for the two series alone. If that were translated to work weeks, it'd be 34 and a half 40 hour work weeks. Yeah, but you didn't do it in a year. It took you six or seven. Well, there we have it. We completed 100 episodes and well, it took us a while to get here, but at the end of the day, I think a lot of us enjoyed it. We got to know a lot of great people. As far as the series itself, I don't know if Sue the Milwaukee Road is gonna continue forward as far as the series. Aww but the channel itself will stay alive. Yay! I am gonna probably do some GNA 1970s. 70s. There'll probably be a rebranded version of the Sioux the Milwaukee Road. Uh, and that's gonna be focusing a little bit more on actual projects. They might go one by one to break them up. I don't know if the variety show is gonna continue like it has, only because for every one minute of footage you watch, it takes me an hour to create. What? So for 20 minutes, 20 hours, you do the math. We've covered a lot of ground over the years. It's definitely a lot of fun to do. I look forward to future content. So keep an eye on the channel and watch for the future videos that might be rolling out. Have a good one and get yourself your switch list, throttle, and roll out. <laughs>
The grab of the week this week is all those characters that are branding themselves. I'm telling you right now, they put their logo on everything. The next thing you know, they got it on a G string and you're looking at them going, ooh, that's not the way I want to see a split rock. I'm telling you right now, when it comes down to it, you want to enjoy your brand, support the guys that are out there, but at the same time, watch what you're selecting. Coffee cups are safe, hats are okay, but that G string, stay away. And that's the curmudgeon's gripe of the week. Ooh, that's not the way I want to see a split rock. A big thanks to everybody that watches to the end that has hit like, hit subscribe, as well as made comments in the past. It's those actions that help share this content, so if you haven't checked out other episodes, feel free to do so. You can also check out the tour of the GN in 1970, as well as the past episodes of the GN in 1970. 70s. Ooh, that's not the way I want to see a split rock.